So this is the 2018 higher level question six. Um, it's capital PLC and it's a published account. So this is the question. Let's, first thing you need to do is read the question from start to finish the whole way down. Okay, so we'll start by having a look at the trial balance. Capital PLC has an authorised share capital of €800,000 divided into 600,000 ordinary shares at €1 euro each and 200,000 8% preference shares at €1 euro each. Then it says the following trial balance was extracted from the books at the end of the year and the year end is 2017. Okay, so you need to be, keep that in mind in case any dates come up um, or years that we need to keep an eye out for. So the first thing in the trial balance is our delivery vans at cost, which are two hundred eighty thousand euro. That's a fixed asset in the balance sheet. Nothing new there. We have depreciation then, um, of one hundred sixteen thousand euro. That's also going into the balance sheet. Um, well, that's where it would go, but obviously we're just going to have one figure going in there. We have investments, and we purchased those investments on the first of the first two thousand seventeen. So there's probably going to be a working somewhere along this question for investment income. We have buildings at cost of seven hundred and sixty thousand, and we have accumulated depreciation of twenty. Uh, sorry, eighty one thousand three hundred euro. We have investment income of eight thousand four hundred euro. So, of the investments up here, we have some investment income received already. So we probably will come across a working on this. Um, we have our debtors and our creditors. They're going to go into the balance sheet. Those trade creditors, the hundred and eight thousand, will go in on their own. And debtors, 139, they will go in with other debtors. So when we're doing our balance sheet, we only have stock, bank and debtors in our current assets section. So if there's any investment income due or anything like that, that's going to go into the debtor. So you'll see that working in a few minutes when, uh, when we get going on the question. Stock of the first of the first, that's going to go into the cost of sales. Patents are an intangible fixed asset. Um, so we might have working on that administrative expenses 205,000 euro they'll go in we might need to add a few things into it distribution costs 144 we may need to add a few more things in there we've got purchases so the purchases are going to be part of the cost of sales working and sales the uh, 1,800,300 that may be adjusted if there's any returns so we'll have to check and see if there's returns Carriage inwards of 6,600, that is going to be in the cost of sales. Returns inwards, there we are, sales returns. So you can see there that the sales up here are on the credit side, so the returns for sales are always on the debit side, so they're sales returns. So for our turnover, we're going to have 1,800,300 um, minus the 20,300, okay? Rental income, that is going to be in the other income section. So we may have more than one other income. So we need to bear that in mind. We have a profit on the sale of land of 87,000. That is going to be an exceptional item. So that was, is shown separately in the profit and loss account. Um, then we have dividends paid. They'll go into the profit and loss on their own, the 55,000. Bank is 82,000. That will go into the balance sheet. So remember in that current assets section we have stock bank and debtors bank is sitting there at 82,000 euro that um is a type of tax as you all know so that actually has to go in with other creditors sorry it doesn't it goes into taxation okay so in your current liabilities we have trade creditors other creditors and taxation that gets added in with the corporation tax in the taxation section so you'll see me doing that again in a few minutes okay and then we have our profit and loss balance that will go in at the bottom of the profit and loss account. We have our issued share capital. So called up share capital in the pro in the balance sheet. We're going to have the two of those figures added together. So we're going to have €720,000 in our called up share capital. Provision for bad debts. You know what a provision is where we set money aside for people that we we um reckon may not pay us so when we're doing our debtors we're gonna have to take that provision away unless of course it tells us to adjust it in the question so we'll wait and see if it does um seven percent debentures that's a loan so a long-term liability we, we probably will have to calculate the interest as well discount always check and see what side this is on it's on the credit side which means it's a, a gain so that's going to go into other income and there's some debenture interest paid. So we have a 7% debenture. 
you have 13,300 paid, we may need to check and see, do we have to pay any more interest? Okay, so let's have a look at the workings. So it says the following information is relevant. Okay, so stock at the end of the year, 86,000 euro, that's always current asset and the liability, uh, sorry, current asset in the balance sheet, and also into the trading account. So that 86,000 is going to go into our cost of sales working. Patent was acquired on the 1st of the 1st, 2014 for €63,000 and it's been amortised over nine years in equal instalments and this amortisation is to be included in cost of sales so we're going to have to add that into cost of sales as well. So we need to be careful of that one, I'll talk you through that when we get back to it. Um, provision should be made for to venture interest due and investment income due. There we go. That's what I was thinking. When we were looking through the trial balance, we should know we have to do that, even if it doesn't tell us in the question. Always double check your interest, your venture interest and your investment income. Auditor's fees, director's fees, they are both going to go into administrative costs. Um, and our corporation tax. There's the corporation tax. So corporation tax will go in at the bottom of the profit and loss. Okay, that's our tax paid on ordinary activities. And it'll also go into that taxation section in the balance sheet within the current liability section. Okay. D included in di distribution cost is the receipt. Hmm. Receipt is money in. Distribution cost is money out. So we'll have to be careful of debit and credits, debits and credits in there for patent royalties. So 15,000 for receipt of patent royalties is included in distribution costs. Going to have to do an adjustment there. During the year, land adjacent to the company's premises had a cost of 80,000 um, was sold for 167 so we are going to have we made a profit obviously we, we bought the land for 80,000 and sold it for 167 so we have a profit on the sale of land and you can actually see that there um, 167,000 minus 80,000 is 87,000 and that's already in our trial balance so that is our exceptional item which I did flag when we were going through the trial balance at the end of the year the company revalued its building so we've got a revaluation uh, to five eight hundred fifty thousand euro, and they want to have that in this year's account. Okay, next one depreciation on buildings is to be provided at a rate of two percent, and is to be allocated forty percent to distribution costs and sixty percent to administration expenses. So, first thing first, we're going to need to do this work in first before we do the revaluation because depreciation has to be done before the revaluation. So just need to be careful of that. Um, so we're going to get 2% of cost, right? Straight line is just of cost. And then we have to split that into the two different expenses. That's fine. We'll be well able for that. There was no purchase or sale of buildings during this year. So that's just telling us that we don't have any dates or anything to worry about. Delivery vans are to be depreciated at a rate of 20% per annum on reducing balance basis. So we'll see that when we get to it. That's just normal uh, book value. Okay. Um, part five or oh, part seven is the company has been sued by a former employee who is claiming unfair dismissal and is seeking damages of a hundred thousand euro. The company legal advisors have stated that it is unlikely, unlikely. It's really important that we check and see is it likely or is it unlikely. So the the legal advisors state that it's unlikely that any compensation will have to be paid to the former employee. So. Basically, they reckon the employee is not going to win the case, so it's unlikely that we'll have to pay any compensation. So when it is unlikely, you don't show it in the accounts. You only show it if it's likely. All right. Um, if this was a question, sorry, if this was um like a company and it was unlikely, they'd just show it in a note to the account. So when it's unlikely, it's in a note. OK, you know, those ones where we um, write out under the question. So you could be asked to do the contingent liability note and that's where you'd say about that, okay? But we're not actually asked to do that note in this question. Um, then it says, the company has received an invoice for legal fees to the value of 5,000 euro. So that 5,000 euro will need to be added into admin and if they just got the invoice, that means they haven't paid it yet. So we need to pay it. We haven't paid it yet. Not good for us to be owing money. So that's a liability um, and that's going to go in with our other creditors. OK, and on the 31st of the 12th, 2017, Capital PLC entered into a preliminary contract agreement with Stewart's Limited, a construction company, to build an extension to its premises at a cost of €400,000. So they haven't actually, they've just agreed to a, a contract 
um, but they haven't actually spent any money or anything like that. So that is only there for the purpose of this note. So the capital expenditure commitments note, that's why they're telling us that. All right. So we're asked to prepare the published profit and loss account for the year ended 31st of the 12th, 2017 and a balance sheet as at that date in accordance with the Companies Act and prepare accounting standards showing the following notes. So we've got five notes to do. Accounting policy, note for tangible fix, fixed assets and stock, operating profit, dividends, capital expenditure commitments note, which is um, point eight up here. And we have to do our tangible fixed assets. So the biggest one there is number five. Okay, the rest of them are all short enough. Um, and part B then, we'll finish off with a small theory question. Explain how an auditor safeguards the interest of the shareholders. So the first thing that I have done is I have listed out all of the notes that I'm, or the workings that I'm going to need. So I'm going to need one for cost of sales, one for admin, one for distribution, one for other income, then other creditors, debtors and taxation. So for the purpose of the video, I've actually ripped this page out. So I'm going to keep flicking back to it. So what would be useful for you guys would be to have a copy book and have one on one page your um workings like this and then on the other page uh, opposite it have your adjustments okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in what has been given to me already from the trial balance okay so I'm going to start off up here with my cost of sales okay and the first thing that's going in there is my opening stock so opening stock of 91,000 euro then we've got purchases in this section as well of already given to us of one million one hundred and seventy thousand euro, and we've carriage in of uh, six thousand six hundred, and we also have our closing stock coming from um the notes or the additional information. So closing stock of eighty six. That's all I have at the minute. I know the patents is going to go in there again because it told me that I need to put that amortization in there. So I'll leave that there for now. Admin, what do I know already? The only thing I know is my trial balance figure of 205,000 euro. Reading the question, we know we're going to have auditor's fees in there, director's fees, legal's fees, and some of that building depreciation as well. Distribution, we have our trial balance figure of 144,000 euro. OK, um, that's all we're given there. Our other income, I flagged two when we were reading the trial balance. We've got rent, rental income of €28,000. And we have a discount sitting on the credit side, which means that it's an income discount of 39000 We know that patent royalties are going to end up going in there. Um, next, just push this up, is our other creditors. We've nothing going in there. Debtors, we do. We've got our debtors figure and we have our provision. So debtors in the trial balance um, of €139,000. And we have provision. That's the provision of €28,500. Okay. And in my taxation section in the balance sheet, I have that coming from the trial balance of 34,200. So that is only going in, in the taxation section in the balance sheet. Okay, um, and that is it. That's all I can fill in for the minute. So I'm now gonna get rid of this page. Um, I'm just gonna put it over here and I will start working on my adjustments, okay? So what do I need to adjust from looking at the additional information? So first one, is patents the patent was acquired so the first one actually is stock but i don't really need to write anything down for that and um, next is the patent was acquired on the first the first 2014 for sixty three thousand euro and it's been amortized over nine years okay so it's been written off over nine years and um, in equal installments and the amortization is to be included in cost of sales okay so i'm starting off the patent was sixty three thousand euro and it cost us 63,000 euro in 2014, right? So don't get too confused about this. 2014 patent cost us 63,000 euro and we're writing it off over nine years, okay? So that means they are writing off 7,000 euro per 
year. And that figure is going to go into our cost of sales. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to label it um, cost of sales. Okay, and you'll see what I'm going to do now in a second. So as always, think back to your question ones. We get our new patents figure. Figure. Okay, so it was 63,000 euro in 2014. Okay, so how many years ago was 2014? How many years have we written off since then? We got the patent at the start of 2014, so we would have started writing it off that year. So 2014, we've written a year off, 2015, 2016, and this is 2017. So that means four years in total have been written off. So minus 7,000 by four years. 7,000 by four is 28,000 euro. So of the patent cost of 63,000 euro up until now, we've already written off three years. It doesn't tell us the figure now. It tells us what it was when we first got it. So we need to find out what the new patent figure is for our balance sheet. It's going to be the 63,000 minus the 28, which leaves us with a patent figure of 35,000 euro. And that is the only intangible fixed asset that we have. So intangible asset, um, asset. Okay, so that's the first work and done. Remember, I'm after labeling that that's going to go into cost of sales. So I'm going to fill those in as I'm going along. So pulling back over my page, I have patents going in here now. 7,000 euro. I'm going to leave it open. I'll total them all up at the, together. I might come across something else that needs to go in here. Okay, so I'm putting that back over there for now. So that is the first working done now. Um, ready to move on to the second one. So, or the third one, if you want to call it the third one. So it says, provision should be made for debenture interest due. Okay, so I'm starting off debenture interest. Okay, so interest on the loan. We have a loan of 300,000 euro. And we're paying back 7% interest, which means for the full year, we should be paying 21,000 euro. And that is going to go into your profit and loss as your interest payable figure. Okay. Um, we have some paid. I flagged that when we were reading through the trial balance. Paid is 13,300, which means that we are still due to pay some. That's not good for us. We're due to pay 7,700 euro. That is going to go into other creditors. Other creditors, that's what I have on my page over here. So I'm pulling that out and I'm saying oh, um, to venture interest. Due, and that figure was the 7,700 euro. Okay, putting that back over there. So I'm filling in those workings as I go along. Hopefully it'll save me time as I go along. Next is investment income. Investment income. We have 300,000 euro investment and that is 6% per year, okay? So we're going to receive income of 6% per year, but we only got that investment um, on the 1st of the 4th, 2017, so the, four, the 1st of April, which means we only had it for nine months. We didn't have it for the full year. So you're only going to get interest for the amount of months that you have it for. So it's going to be 13,500 euro. And that is um, going to go into the profit and loss. Profit and loss. And that is going to be uh, income from financial investments. Okay. Um, we did get some of that already. So paid already. We already received 8,400 euro. So that means we are due to get 5,000 euro. 100 now usually i would label that going into current assets but we know that in our current assets in published accounts we're only allowed to have stock debtors and bank so i'm going to put it in with debtors so i'm labeling it debtors and i'm pulling my page over and i'm saying investment income due of 5100 euro okay put that back over there um next is Still in that same working, it says auditor's fees of 16,000 and director's fees of 32,000. So that means 
they are charges that need to go into our profit and loss. We haven't paid them yet, so they also have to go into our current liabilities. Now, our current liabilities, it's going to go into other creditors. So I'm not going to write anything on this page for this working. I'll pull my page over here straight away. Okay, so this is straightforward enough. I just need to put in two expenses. So I'm going auditor's fees, audit fees, and director's fees. Audit fees are 16,000. And director's fees are 32,000. Okay, auditor's fees and director's fees. We haven't paid that yet. So my double entry is down here in the other creditors. So I'm saying audit fee due and director fee due. 16 and 32,000 euro. Okay. Next is corporation tax. Again, don't really have to do anything there. Um, corporation tax is going to go down, go into um, our profit and loss account as tax on ordinary activities. But it also has to, it hasn't been paid yet, so it needs to go into the taxation here. So I'm going to write corp tax, and it's forty nine thousand. So I know that they're the only two taxations, but I'll total up it when I'm doing all the other totals. Okay, so I'm putting this page away again. That's everything in that third point done now. Um, next is included in the distribution um, costs is the receipt of 15,000 euro for patent royalties. So I'm actually going to show you this in T account format. So you nearly need to think like your suspense working. Um, so this is an it's similar as well to patents um you know the patents working with investment income from question one so you need to be thinking of the double entries the whole time for this and um, patents are um patent royalties we're paid royalties when someone uses our patent they have to pay us royalties so it's an income for this company so let's have a look and see what they did they put the patent royalties into the distribution costs okay so we've got three t accounts that we need to look at here distribution Costs, we have our patent royalties. These, I'll just move this up. And we have bank. Okay, I'll just do bank down here. So, distribution costs we know are an expense. Okay, so I'm going to write expense up here just for, the, for you to understand it. And expenses rules are plus on the debit side and minus on the credit side. Patent royalties are an income. Okay, and the rules of that account are credit side is a plus and the debit side is a minus. And then we've got a bank, right? So we've got plus, this is an asset if you want me to write that beside it. And this is a minus. Okay, so this are the, these are the three accounts that are in this transaction. Okay, so something went wrong. They have the royalties in the wrong account. So we know the money came into the bank account. It was money into the business that so went into the bank account on the debit side. So we have 15 grand sitting in here on the debit side, okay? The double entry was, they put it into the distribution cost. So the double entry would have been straight into the credit side, 15,000 euro. So that actually decreased the distribution costs, okay? So we had our balance over here of whatever it was. It doesn't matter what it was, right? So we had a balance and by putting that 15,000 euro in there, it decreased the total, okay? So you need to undo this. And we all know to undo it, we put the 15,000 euro on the opposite side. Okay, so that means I need to add them back into the distribution costs. Okay, and the double entry then, the correct entry would have been to credit the income account. Okay, so by getting that 15,000 euro into the bank, we should have increased the income account. But instead, the double entry went in on the credit side of the distribution cost and that decreased it. So instead of putting it on the credit side here, they put it on the credit side here, okay? And by doing that, they have decreased it. So to undo it, put it on the debit side, which means you need to add it back in. So I'm now gonna show these two 15 thousands in my, um, this page, okay? So I'm going to put it into my income, my other income, paid in royalties 15,000. 15,000. And also, I have to remove it 
from my distribution but remember by removing it I'm adding it in okay so I'm putting in patent royalties and that is another 15,000 going in there okay and that's that um that's that working done um I'm now on to point five uh, which is point four in my workings because I didn't show stock um so point five four Point four is during the year land adjacent to the company's premises which had cost 80,000 was sold for 167,000 euro. So we know that that's just going to be an exceptional item in my profit and loss. But then it says at the end of the year the company uh, the company revalued its buildings 850,000 euro and wishes to incorporate this into this year's account. But then it has the, the depreciation of buildings underneath in point seven so i'm actually going to do the the, the reval and the, the building depreciation here together so reval and that's fine to do it this way as well building depreciation okay so we're going to go we're going to look at point um six and see what the story is with the building's depreciation so depreciation on buildings is to be provided at a rate of two percent per annum straight line okay so the first thing don't worry about spitting it up yet we'll just get the depreciation charge so our buildings and the trial balance are sitting at seven hundred and sixty thousand euro and we're depreciating it by two percent per year okay and that charge is going to be fifteen thousand two hundred that's the one that we're going to end up um actually splitting right so follow the steps as usual add our previous depreciation and that is 81,300 euro so my total depreciation is 96,500 okay that's my new accumulated depreciation I'm going to pause it there for the minute and I'm going to work on spitting this so my total is 15,200 sorry 15,200 and we're going to split that so my selling and distribution or my distribution cost, I shouldn't have wrote selling there, is 40%. So I'm going to put into my calculator 15,200 by 40%, which is 6,080. And then my admin, which is 60%, is 9,120 euro. Okay, so these two costs, I'm going to pause it there, as I said. Don't go into the reval yet. Let's pop them in. So we've got... 6,080 going into the distribution and we've 9,120 going into admin so let's add them in now so admin we have building depreciation can you see this nope building depreciation is 9,120 and my distribution is 6,080 um building six thousand one hundred and eighty no oh, i think i just made that figure up six oh eight oh six thousand yeah six thousand eighty okay um so that is that now i'm going to move on to doing the revaluation so remember to follow the same steps as we do for question one current value is 760 euro thousand euro okay the reval amount is um 850 so we've got an increase there of uh, 90,000 euro okay so that's the, always the first step second step get rid of all your depreciation so when you're revaluing all the depreciation goes with it okay you're starting from scratch so nine thousand ninety six thousand five hundred is going to be taken away which gives us a zero so it's the ninety thousand plus the ninety six thousand five hundred that will be shown in your revaluation reserve and that's your 90 increase plus your ninety six thousand five hundred all of the depreciation and um, that you've previously written off so um, our revaluation reserve works out at being 186,500 euro okay that's your revaluation reserve that goes into your finance buy section financed 
in your balance sheet okay that is that and um, the next working is I'm looking at the delivery van so I'm now skipping because I did the revaluation and the depreciation together I'm now at the bottom of the fifth point in the question delivery vans are to be depreciated at a rate of 20% per annum on a reducing balance basis don't let the reducing balance part um, worry you it's just um, the same as if it said they're to be depreciated uh, according to net, uh, to book value so our delivery vans I'm going to squash it down in here delivery vans so we have delivery vans worth um 280,000 euro in the balance sheet oh, in the trial balance sorry and we have previous depreciation of 116,000 euro which leaves us with 164,000 euro book value and uh, zero 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 I do need that extra zero okay so they're worth 164 so my depreciation is 164,000 by 20% which is 32,800 euro okay that's going to be my distribution expense or cost um, and I'll put pop that in on the other page now in a minute uh, follow your steps through plus previous depreciation of 116,000 euro which leaves us with a new accumulated depreciation of 148,800 euro okay and we're going to come back to this because we have to do the note on the tangible fixed assets okay so um, that is all of the workings because the next one it says the company is being sued for uh, by a former employee who is claiming an unfair dismissal Okay, so we said that it's unlikely that we have to pay any compensation. So we're not actually going to show that in the account. But we do need to be careful of that extra €5,000 in legal fees. So I need to pull this page back over. And while I'm here, I forgot to put that 32800 in. So I'm going to pop that in now. Um, where is my page? Distribution of €32,800. €30. 2800 and that is depreciation on delivery vans okay so the legal fees now in point seven and um, they are going to go into admin because that is where they go in these questions so any audit fees director fees and um, legal fees they go into admin and if you're asked to that operating profit note we're going to mention that in there so we're going to have legal fees legal fees of 5000 euro and then it says must be provided for which means they haven't actually paid them yet so i need to add that into my other creditors okay so just think of other creditors like the rest of your current liability section okay and um, so legal fees due 5000 euro okay and that is that um, so that's point seven looked at and point eight as I said that is just there for your capital expenditure commitments note okay so that is everything in this section um, in this page completed so I can start totting everything up to get ready to go on to do my trade and profit and loss account so I have five things in here popping that into my calculator it gives us one million one hundred and eighty eight thousand six hundred euro okay admin should add up to six two six seven one twenty distribution is one hundred and ninety seven thousand eight hundred and eighty other income is working out at eighty two thousand five hundred oh just eighty two thousand sorry other creditors is going to be sixty thousand seven hundred and your debtors, so your 139,000, your debtors minus your provision and add in that investment income due of 115,600 euro. And my taxation then, oh, you didn't see any of that. Whoops. Um, my taxation is 83,200 euro. Okay, so that's all my, my um, workings done. 
I'm ready now to move on and actually do the trade and profit and loss account. So this is the trade and profit and loss account. Um, it's just called the published profit and loss account for capital PLC for the year ended 31st of 12, 2017. So make sure you're giving it the full heading there. Um, your turnover is the first thing. So remember, we're following the exact template. Wording has to be perfect. No extra piece of information shown on the face of the account okay so the turnover is the first thing that's going in which is your sales figure of 1,800,000 um, and 300 euro minus your 20,300 euro in returns you don't really need to show that anywhere you can just um make sure you do it yourself that will give you your 1,780,000 euro in your account so that's that one then we have um so that's that one we have our cost of sales figure of 1,188,600. That's coming from our workings, from our um our, our page with all our totals. That's coming straight from that. So you take your cost of sales away from your turnover, which gives you a gross profit of 591,400 euro. We then have our distribution costs going in there. So make sure you're calling them distribution costs and administrative expenses. So you don't need to total them in between the two expenses. You can put the two in together plus your operating income, all of those figures coming from our workings, which leaves us with an operating profit of 208,400 euro, okay? So you can see there, admin, um, admin your administration um, expenses or um, costs, they are, you get six marks for that, and that is because that's the most, the most amount of work went into that one. So you actually had five items going into your, your admin where you only had four going into your um, selling and distribution. So you get you, you get awarded more marks for the, for the figures that you did more work for. Our other operating income is €82,000, as I said. So that gives us our operating profit. Your exceptional item or profit from the sale of land is your €87,000. And that's from when we um, sold the land. Okay, so we made a profit of €87,000. That has to be shown separate according to the rules of the published accounts. Um, we then have income from financial investments. That's your investment to income of 13500 I did that in the workings. And our interest payable of 21000 which is interest on the debenture. That gives us our profit on ordinary activities before taxation of €287,900. You see that you are actually getting one mark there for labelling that correctly. Okay, You're not actually getting a mark for the figure, but you're getting one mark for profit on ordinary activities before taxation. Okay, Next is your tax, your tax on profit on ordinary activities. That's your corporation tax of 49000 So make sure the VAT is not included in that. It's just the corporation tax. Then that will uh, give us our profit on ordinary activities after taxation. That's this one here. Um, less our dividends paid of €55,000. That's coming straight from the trial balance. You're only getting two marks for that. Um, that leaves us with a retained profit. So the profit that we have left over this year is €183,900. So that's this figure. In previous years, we've brought forward a balance of minus €42,500. So it's on the debit side it's a minus and what's on the credit side it's a plus okay so in this question it's on the debit side and um, our profit and loss account at the first the first is on the debit side so it's a minus so i'm taking the 42,500 euro away which leaves me with a f um, profit and loss balance of 141,400 euro this year so this is the balance sheet then of Capital PLC as at the 31st of the 12th, 2017. You're starting off with your fixed assets. We just have one figure in for each type of fixed asset. Start off your, with your intangible asset, which is your patent, which we calculated in the first adjustment as being €35,000. So you're getting two marks for putting that in there. We then have our tangible assets. So our tangible assets are the ones that we can touch and we can see. Okay, so they are your buildings and your delivery vans in this question so i want to show you where that 981,200 is coming from so we have we're looking down here at the bottom we have buildings worth 850,000 euro which is the revalued amount so we revalued our buildings to 850,000 euro so that's one okay we have our delivery vans then as well so at cost they were 280,000 euro and by the end of this year, we have our new accumulated depreciation coming from working five, my adjustment five, 
um, our new accumulated depreciation is the 148,800 euro, which means the net book value, the actual worth of the business, of the, sorry, of the delivery vans at the end of this year is 131,200 euro. So I'm adding the 850,000 plus my 131,200, which leaves me with a value, a net book value of 981,200 euro. Okay, that is what goes in to my fixed assets in the balance sheet. Okay, so we're just showing one net book value figure for all of the fixed assets together. So that 981,200 is going in here. Okay, so this is the figure here. All right, um, so that is how I got that figure. Financial assets um, then is my investment of 300,000 euro. Okay. And then we're going on to current assets. Always, always, always only going to have, we're only going to have three things in here. Our stock, our closing stock of 86,000 euro coming from the first item in the relevant information. We then have our debtors figure, three marks for that. That's what we did the adjustments on in our workings. So it's our debtors minus our vision plus our investment income due um, left us with 115,600 euro. Then we have our bank figure of 82,000. We're carrying one mark on that one from carrying it straight from our trial balance over. We then have our creditors amounts falling due within one year and you're getting one mark for writing that heading. So make sure you have the headings in properly because you could get a mark for that in your leave insert. So our trade creditors is our standard um, trade creditors, people that we owe money to um, because of purchases we have made on credit. That is coming straight from our trial balance and that is 100 and eight thousand euro okay then we have our other creditors so that was our debenture interest due our auditors fees due directors fees due and legal fees due that brought us to sixty thousand seven hundred euro and we're getting four marks for that then we have our taxation um of eighty three thousand two hundred euro that's our vat and our corporation tax combined that was shown also in our workings um, so our total money coming in this year is 83,600 and we have two, uh, sorry, 283,600 and going out within the next year we have 251,900 so they are liquid, they do have enough money to cover their um, bills as they fall due. So we have a working capital, we're going to call it net current assets in this question though of 31,700 euro. And that gives us a total then, our first balance of €1,347,900. Um, then we have our finance buy section and we have our creditors, amounts falling due after one year. We have our debenture going in there of 7% debentures, which is €300,000. And you're getting two marks for putting that in. We then have our called up share capital. So the called up share capital of 720 that is coming from our ordinary uh, shares of 600,000 euro and our preference shares of 120,000 euro. They're coming from the trial balance, not the, not the figures up on top before the trial balance. The ones before the trial balance are authorised. They're not going in in this question. It's just the issued. Okay. And then our revaluation reserve coming from the workings. We get three marks for that. And we have a profit and loss balance then being carried forward from our profit and loss account of 141,400. So you're adding the 300,000 and the 1047,900 one, and that will give you your capital employed figure. And I would like if you could label your capital, capital employed of 1,347,900 euro. So the next part of the question or the final part of this question is um, the notes, the explanatory notes to the accounts. And you're asked for five different notes in this question. The accounting policy note for tangible fixed assets and stock, the operating profit note, dividends note, capital expenditure commitments note, and the tangible fixed assets note. So these are the things that you're going to have to learn off. Um, the format stays the same then. So the first one is a tangible fixed assets note and it's six marks for this one. So you need to talk about the revaluation, you need to talk about the depreciation policies and you also need to talk about stock. So buildings were revalued at the end of the year, at the end of this year um, and have been included in the accounts at their revalued amount. So make sure you're checking off the sheet, the worksheet that I've given you. Um, depreciation is calculated in order to write off the value 
or cost of tangible fixed asset over the estimated over their estimated useful economic life as follows. Then you need to say the two fixed assets and their depreciation policy. So buildings, 2% per annum, straight line basis. Delivery vans, 20% per annum, reducing balance basis. So make sure you're saying straight line basis and reducing balance basis. Then your stocks. Stocks are valued on a first in, first out basis and at the lower of cost or net realizable value. Then your operating profit note. The operating profit is arrived at after charging depreciation on tangible fixed assets and add your depreciation charge from your delivery vans and your buildings together for that 48,000. Then we've got patent amortized of 7,000 euro. We have director's fees of 22,000, auditor's fees of 16,000 and legal fees of 5,000 euro. Then your dividends note, so you just, you're just saying what dividend was paid. So in this question, we have dividends paid of 55,000 euro. And you have to see, say how many cent was paid per share to the ordinary, for, in ordinary dividend and in preference dividend. So you need to actually calculate this yourself. So if we just look over here, I have it done out, okay? So we know that 55,000 was paid in total. And the, first, the only way that we're going to figure out which what amount is for preference shareholders and what amount was for ordinary shareholders is by looking at the preference shares. So the preference shares, we had 120,000 of them and they were getting an 8% return, okay? So the 20% is, sorry, the 120,000 by 8%, which is 9,600 euro worth of dividends. So we know that the preference shareholders were, were given 9,600 euro in dividend, okay? And we know that that's for 120,000 shares. Okay, so if you divide your 9,600 by the 120,000 shares, you will get 8 cent was given for each share. Okay, so I'll just repeat that. Our preference, we have 120,000 euro in preference shares. I'm getting that from the trial balance. There's an 8% return on it. So we had to pay 8%. So put into your calculator, 120,000 by 8% will give you 9,600 euro. And that's for 120,000 shares. So if 9,600 is for 120,000 shares, divide 9,600 by the 120 and you'll get 8 cents per share. So that is where they are getting their preference dividends paid, 9,600 euro. Okay, then we need to find out what the story is with the ordinary dividend. Okay, so if we know that the total dividend is 55,000, so I'm looking down here now, um. The ordinary dividend is 55, sorry, the total dividend is 55,000, so take away your preference and the remainder then, the 45,400 is ordinary dividend. So to find out how much cent there is given out per share, if 45,400 is for 600,000 shares, I'm finding that 600,000 ordinary shares in the trial balance, that means it's 7.57 cent per share and it's actually 7.56666 recurring so you round up to 7.57 cent so always round to two decimal places and that is where they are getting these figures here okay so in that dividend note you're saying ordinary dividend paid 7.57 cent per share and you're saying that adds up to 45,400 and your preference dividends paid is 8 cent per share and that's 9,600 euro Okay, and um, then the next note is your capital expenditure commitments and that is the company has entered into a preliminary contract with Steward Limited for the building of an extension to its premises for the sum of €400,000 and they also intend to carry out further capital improvements to existing premises at a cost of €120,000. So you're showing that in the account so that when shareholders or anybody is looking at these accounts, they know, well, this business are planning on spending X amount of money in the next couple of years, maybe. Um, and that's important for shareholders to know. So that's why you have to do that. The last working uh, note that they want then is your tangible fixed assets this note. Is your tangible fixed asset note. Okay, this is the last one. So you could actually do this one before doing your balance sheet if you wanted to. Um, because this last figure that we're going to have down here is the sh is, should be the figure that we get 
that we show in our balance sheet. So I'll just talk you through this. This is my column here for all the information for landed buildings. All the delivery vans information is going in here and then the total for both of the types of assets are going in here, okay? Everything up here is related to the cost of the asset. So what was the cost at the start of the year? Um, did we have any disposals? Was there a revaluation? And what is the value at the end of the year? Then we'll have our depreciation section. Now these are just labeled just for the explanation purposes. So you shouldn't be doing this in your um, question. So depreciation at the first of the first. And uh, so at the start of the year before the charge for this year, depreciation charge for this year, which we calculated in our workings. Was there any disposals? Generally, there's not really disposals. Okay. Um, in terms of we had we did have a disposal of land, but there's no depreciation on land. Okay. But just in case it ever came up in that we ha we might have to do a revaluation in delivery vans, you need to know take out the depreciation that was on the van or whatever it was that you disposed of. Okay. So you don't really need to write that in, but I just want you to be to be mindful of that in case you do ever see it. Um transfer on revaluation so make sure you've got transfer on i just i just forgot about it when i was writing in and then that plus that minus that minus that will give us this okay so you'll see it as we go through and then our net book value the net book value at the start of the year and the net book value at the end of the year so we're ready to start popping in the, the information now so we're going to start off at cost the cost at the start of the year land and buildings right so we need to be careful of this. In the trial balance, it only tells us about buildings, okay? So the buildings were 760,000 euro, okay? But then, remember in point five, it said, during the year, land adjacent to the company's premises, which had cost 80,000 euro, was sold. So at the start of the year, we had the 760,000 worth of buildings plus that 80,000 euro worth of land. So the value of our land and buildings at the start of the year was 840,000 euro. So I'm popping that in there, 840. Okay, my cost of my delivery vans, 280 coming straight from the trial balance. So it's just that land that you need to be careful of here. And that will leave my total at 1,120,000 euro. Okay. Do we have any disposals? Yes, that land that I just spoke of, we, we sold that land. So remember, take it out at cost price. We sold the land of €80,000 um, so that is removed. Okay. Did we have any disposals of delivery vans? No. So you can leave that blank. You can put a dash. You can put a not if you want. Um, so that'll be minus €80,000 going in here. Okay. Revaluation. We did have a revaluation. And in the revaluation, you're putting um the increase okay so we we increased the value by ninety thousand euros so you're not putting the revaluation reserve figure in you're only putting the increase so that leaves our land and building sitting there at eight hundred and fifty thousand euro okay there was no um revaluation in delivery vans i'll put another dash there so it leaves my delivery vans at two hundred and eighty thousand euro so the value at the end of the year was still the same for delivery vans and it was now eight hundred and fifty thousand Oh, sorry, that should be 90. So my total there is going to be 1,130,000 euro. Okay, so next is you are doing your depreciation section. You're starting off by popping in what depreciation did we have at the start of the year? And it actually says in the trial balance, accumulated depreciation on the 1st of the 1st, 2017. So in the del delivery vans, and I'll start off with that because that's first on the on the in the trial balance, we had one hundred and sixteen thousand, um, one one six. And in land and buildings, we had eighty one three hundred. Well, buildings we just had eighty one three hundred. Okay, so that is a total of one hundred and ninety seven thousand three hundred euro. Okay. Then what was our charge for the year? You're just putting the total in. So 15,200 and we had 38, sorry, 32,800 in here. So our total is 48,000 euro, okay? And you're adding, so you're basically, this is like your um, accumulated depreciation account. We had a start and balance, then we added in depreciation charge. So you're adding this in. If it was a disposal, you would be taking it out, but there was no disposals. You don't even need to show that. I just wanted you to be aware that if you ever saw 
disposal to have it in there okay so that leaves oh a revaluation did we have a revaluation we did um of 96,500 okay so what is no we had no um revaluation here so putting a dash through there and we have a uh, 96,500 minus in my total okay so you know that when there's a revaluation all of our depreciation gets brought back down to zero so if you add these two together and take that away you should end up with zero which we do so if you end up with a figure down here you've gone wrong somewhere in it okay so just be careful of that they should always be zero if there's a revaluation at the end of the year all right so our depreciation on the 31st of the 12th is 148,800 euro for delivery vans okay and in here in my total we have 148,000 800 okay so 0 plus 148,800 is that and put this in so 197,300 plus 48 minus 96,500 should also give you that so you could be checking this as you go along if you have time Um, next is your net book value so to get my net book value at the start of the year it's going to be this line here minus this line okay so the cost of the start of the year minus the accumulated depreciation at the start of the year Okay, so my net book value for land and buildings works out at seven five eight seven hundred. Okay, the delivery vans one hundred and sixty four thousand euro, and total nine hundred and twenty two thousand seven hundred euro. Okay, net book value at the end of the year is. I'll mark this in black. It's going to be my value at the end of the year minus the depreciation at the end of the year. So my net book value of my land and buildings should be, well, because we got rid of the piece of land, it actually is all buildings at this point, um, should be 850,000, which it is, okay, because we did that revaluation. So if you have a revaluation, you should have your reval amount down here. Okay, my new value of my delivery vans is one three one two hundred, and that gives my new net book value at the end of the year is nine hundred and eighty one thousand two hundred euro. Okay, so it shouldn't take you too long to do that work in. It's just pulling the figures out. This nine eight one two hundred is the figure that we had in our balance sheet for our tangible assets. So the last part of that question is a 10 mark theory question. Explain how an auditor safeguards the interests of the shareholders. So the, uh, the role of the auditor is to give an opinion on the financial statements. OK, and the auditor will decide and they'll report on whether the statements give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company. So the accounts of a company have to give a true and fair view of the company at that time okay so an auditor is someone that is from outside of the company and they come in and they take a look at their the financial statements take a look at the business they actually physically check things and see does this set of financial statements give a true and fair view of the business okay so by examining, so I'm looking here now at this answer. So one of the points that they wanted in the answer was by examining the financial statements and giving an insurance that they give a true and fair view. So if you are a shareholder and you're looking, maybe you're a potential shareholder, you're looking at this, the company's accounts, you want to make sure that the the company's accounts do give a true and fair view of the business. And by an audit happening, you know and them sorry when an audit happens and um the accounts are published you know that that means that the those financial statements do give a true and fair view of the company okay the next one then by preparing an audit report and giving insurance that financial statements have been prepared in accordance with the company's act and accounting standards and practices so you know as well that the the company are um following the correct uh, practices in terms of their financial statements and their accounting standards and um, so because that's what the auditor checks and um, so by being able to threaten a qualified report um, a qualified audit report thereby discouraging fraud so a qualified audit report is 
when just say the auditor checks the accounts and and they decide wait no these accounts do not show a true and fair view that's called an, an a qualified report okay so when you're a business you do not want a qualified report you want what's called an unqualified report so unqualified is where the auditor says yep these accounts are fine, they show a true and fair view and they are correct in accordance with all the accounting standards and practices. So if the auditor is able to threaten a qualified audit report, that means it discourages fraud, which is in turn good for the shareholders because obviously the shareholders don't want fraudulent behaviour happening in the company. Um, then being independent of the directors, the auditor is appointed by the shareholders and is responsible to them. So the shareholders are the people that decide on the auditor and they are not working for the directors. So, you know, if, if the auditors were working for the directors, they could be led maybe to say that they, the, the financial statements give a true and fair view when they don't. So um, by being independent and appointed by the shareholders, it means that they are working in the interest of the shareholders and making sure that those accounts do um, show a true and fair view of the company.